Okay, let's tie a royal wolf. This is a uh, fun one to tie. It's uh, got a few little tricks to it, though. And uh, I'm going to try to show you as many of those as I can as we go through this. And what we're going to start with is a, uh, this is a Tiemco size 14, 100 SPBL, um, sort of my go-to dry fly hook. And I'm going to tie this with relatively small thread. So um, what I've got in my bobbin right here right now is Tiemco 16 knot. Vivas 14 knot, like so would be just fine as well. Um, I've just got the 16 knot strung up in my bobbin. Um, so this is a hair wing, hair tail fly. Don't let uh, the hair wing and hair tail make you think that you need a big giant uh, heavy thread. Uh, we've got a fair amount of thread work on this fly so we don't want thread that's too heavy because we want to be able to make the amount of wraps that we need to make. So I'm going to start off by starting this thread really just behind the eye and I'll dress you know the front half-ish or so of the hook. I'll bring the thread up to the middle of that front half, so about the 75% point is where my thread should be hanging there. Now for the wings on a, on a wolf, we're going to use white calf body hair. And calf body hair is a, a tough material to get a good chunk of. Um, what you want is something that's got really dense hair that is fairly long. Um, it doesn't have to be as long as you can get it. Sometimes you can get hair that's uh, really long, um, but it's pretty wispy. Um, this is a nice dense clump. Uh, you can see as I've cut that off the hide, nice dense clump, uh, relatively straight. It's got some wave to it, but relatively straight as this kind of stuff goes. Um, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to grab it as close to the tips as I can, and kind of fan it out in my fingers a bit, and then I'll pull all this short stuff out. You can see that hair that I've pulled out is finer, so I want to get rid of all that. And you generally start with a, a much bigger clump than you'll end up putting on the fly just because you've got to clean so much of the short stuff out. So I'll put that clump in my stacker. And I do put it in my medium sized stacker. Um, the reason being is that wavy hair needs a little bit more room to shake down. And I do tap it a little bit more aggressively than, uh, than deer hair or elk hair, generally speaking. And so I'll end up with a, a nice square clump like so. I always sort of go through after I've stacked it, make sure there's nothing uh, extra long or extra short that's going to cause trouble later. And sometimes I'll even go back and stack it one more time after the fact. This uh, calf body hair, even the long stuff, is relatively short. So you want to be diligent about cleaning it out and keeping everything nice and neat and even. And I'm pretty happy there. So we've got a nice, neat, even clump. Uh, so my thread's hanging at 75%. I'm going to take this hair, I'm going to measure it to the hook shank, so it's one shank length long. You can see my thumbnail there on the back side is what I'm using to mark the bend of the hook there. And I'll set that hair down, I'm going to take two turns around it and just tighten the thread. You can see that hair doesn't do anything when I tighten the thread. This is a solid hair, so it's not going to flare. But I'm going to build a band of thread, and these are good tight wraps, a band of thread traveling backwards, anchoring that hair on top of the hook, like so. Um, you can see I've actually left my tag end of my thread hanging out there. It's not a big deal. It's short enough. It's short as the bend. Um, it's going to get covered along the way. I don't need to make a special trip just to cover that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift these butt ends up. I'm going to come in from the back of the hook with the scissors almost parallel to the hook. You can see just a slight angle there. And I want to cut this hair at an angle into a slope. I missed a couple. Come back and just clean those up a bit like so. So you can see that's cut to a taper. From here, I'm going to continue to wrap right back down over those tapered butt ends, and that'll cover that tag as I go, all the way back to the bend of the hook, so that my thread's hanging even with the point on the barb. Once I get there, I'm going to use, this is moose hawk, that I'm going to use here. Uh, for the tail. Now moose hawk is another solid hair. It's not going to flare much. It's very dark. This piece in particular has got very little uh, very little variegation to it. It's very very dark colored piece of hair. Almost black. Dark dark brown. And I'm going to cut a clump of it and I'm going to clean it out real well. So I've got a nice neat little stack here. And I'll stack this up. I could just go straight into my small stacker with this small bunch. Now on a hair wing fly, um, you know, a tractor dry like this, I do tend to make the tails a little heavier than I would say on a, on a standard Adams. Um, you know, there's probably 20 hairs on a size 14. So I'll take that clump now, 
and I'll measure it against either the wing or the shank. They should be the same length. And then butt my fingers. And I'll trap this on top of the bend right here at the back. And I'll start to work forward right up to the beginning of the taper that we cut. So when I get there, I'm going to lift those butt ends up. And I'm going to take my scissors and just lay them parallel to the hook right across the top of that cut and slice those off. What that will give me is the butt ends beveled very nicely into the butt ends of the wing. So I don't have a big step between the two. I've got a nice smooth even underbody there. Once I've got that, I'm going to come in and this is where I'm going to start to stand the wing up. So I'm going to bring my thread right up to the back edge of the wing. I'm going to close my fingers under the hook. This is my thumb and forefinger. I'm going to slide them up and back and drag the wing with it. And I'll bring the thread in front of the wing and I'll build my thread down here. Now with this fine thread you're going to take a little bit more uh, thread. It's going to take a little more thread work than, than you would with a coarser thread. So you can see I'm working back and forth to build a taper up to the base of the wing. And when I get to the base of the wing, I'm going to tuck these wraps right as tight up to the base of the wing as I can. And one of the things I do when I do this, when I try to build this thread down, is as I come on top of the hook, the thread will be in front of the wing. Let me get this where you can see it here. So it'll be on top in front of the wing. And on the bottom, I'll bring it back way back behind the wing to stand that wing upright. Now you can see this finished finished wing is spread out a little front to back. To gather that, I'm going to hold the wing in my thread hand, and my thread is now hanging on the front side of the wing. So I'm going to grab the wing, and I'm going to take two turns from front to back, right against the back edge of the wing. And you can see that'll sort of group that wing together into a nice tidy bunch. And I'll just take a wrap around the hook. So now we're going to divide the wing. And to do that, we're literally just going to part the wing in the middle, Right in half, we want the wings to be even quantities of hair. And I just do it with my fingers. So I'll turn this here so you can see it and kind of get a general idea of what I've done. If I don't hold it, it'll come back together. So I'm going to hold on to the, to the far wing. And my thread is hanging on the back side. And I'm going to go back to front, near side to far side, four or five turns, and then around the hook just to start to begin to make that X. Now I'm going to grab my near wing, and I'm going to go front to back, near to far, four or five turns, to complete that X. So you can see we've got those X wraps stacked nice and neat, right, right tight on top of each other. Um, you don't want any spread. You don't want those wraps laying next to each other. You want them right on top of each other. So now I'm going to post the wings, and this is the same steps that you do on a humpy or any other hair wing wolf style fly. Um, what I do is I turn the far wing up, and I'm going to take my bobbin, and this is in my material hand here. I'm going to come around the base of the wing, and I'm just going to make enough posting turns here to gather the wing up into a nice tight little bunch. Okay. Once I get to the top, I'll come back to the bottom, and then I'll take a turn of thread around the hook. Now, you can absolutely turn the, the, the near wing to the upside as well. What I usually just do is switch hands and work this around this wing. You can see how I expertly missed that one single hair there. I'm going to cut him out. So I'll come up to the top of that post and back down again. And then I'm going to come in and make that one non-player out of there. So now I can stand my wings up. So we've got them right at about 90 degrees to the hook shank. All right, now we're going to move the thread just behind the wings here. And I'm going to come in with a piece of relatively fine copper wire. And I'm going to tie it in along the near side of the hook from right behind the wings. And I'm going to wrap back over it all the way back to the base of the tail. Um, that's not something that's on a, a traditional wolf. This is something that I've added to mine. Um, it uh, helps reinforce the body of the fly a bit, makes it a little bit tougher. So now I'm going to come in with some peacock curl. Now, this is a peacock eye, and you can see the hurls in this are very small. Um, as opposed to uh, the hurl that's further down the eye, you can see how thick these are. OK, 
compared to this stuff from the eye. So right up in the eyed quill, in the pretty part of the eyed quill, we've got some really nice fine peacock. And I'm going to take oh, four or five of these. Looks like I've got six, but that's close enough. I'm going to cut the tips so that they're even, and I cut them a little bit down from their natural tip. If you go right by the natural tip, they tend to break off. It's very fine there. So I'm going to cut them a little bit further back. I'm going to catch these at the bend, wrap over them right up to the bend, and then just bump my thread forward about a third of the way. So now what I'll do is I'm going to take this peacock and I'm going to roll it in my fingers. And you don't want to roll too much here, but what this does is sort of cord it up into a rope. Now I'm going to start to build my first ball of peacock back here at the bend. And you can see I'll kind of roll that as I go. Put two turns, third turn right through the middle, and then I'll tie that peacock off with a couple turns of thread. And I'll clip that out. Now a lot of people would leave those butt ends on, wrap forward over them, and then use the butt end of that same clump to build the second bunch. But because those fibers are tapered and as you work down the stem on the peacock, you can see the stuff down closest to the stem is pretty woody. It's not near as nice a peacock curl as the stuff at the tip, so that's why I don't do that that way. Now I'm going to take some unifloss. So this is red unifloss, and it's a one-ply floss. So what that means is that it's just a single strand as opposed to the old four-strand floss. But one strand is just too much for most flies. So what I do with this is I cut a section off. I've cut about maybe six inches here. And I'm going to rotate either side until that strand of floss starts to separate. You can see how it's buckling away from each other. And I'll put my scissors in the, like so. So you always want to work from the center. And then I can separate that and divide it in half. And for a size 14, about a half a strand is about what we want. Uh, so I'll run my fingers down this. If you've got real rough abrasive fingers, you're going to shred that floss. So be careful if you, if you do have rough fingers. I'm going to cut the ends of that so it's square. And you can see I've moved my thread forward. I've bumped it up. Uh, it's probably at about the uh, 75, or oh, not 75, 60% point. And I'm going to catch that floss and draw it down to length. Catch it with several tight turns of thread. And you can see as I pull it up, it'll start to fray out a little bit. What I want to do is stroke this floss to align all those fibers so that they will lay tight. You can see how that's now become a single strand. And I'm going to take this strand and I'm going to wrap it from the front to the back. If it starts to separate more than you want as you go, you can sort of roll it in your fingertips to cord it back up. And we don't want a cord, we're just trying to keep it grouped together. I'll wrap right up to the front of that bunch of peacock curl. And then I'll begin to work forward again. So I've made a double layer floss body. And I'll tie that floss off with a couple of turns. Trim that out. Now I'll grab some more peacock curl. Same stuff from the eye. About the same amount. Cut the tips. Tie that in and pull it down to length. And I'll roll it up the same way. In these first couple turns, I'm actually going to back up over the front edge of that floss until I build an equal size bunch at the front end. And I'll tie that peacock off with a couple of turns. And I can trim that out. Now I'm going to come in with my copper wire here. And I'm going to rib right forward through the peacock. Get a couple turns through there. Right up over the floss and forward through the front bunch of peacock. And then I'll tie that wire off. Um, you can see that wire just barely shows, but that'll add a lot of durability to that fine peacock curl. That stuff out of the eye is pretty, uh, pretty fine stuff, so it's not the toughest stuff in the world. And you can helicopter that end or just break it off. So now we're gonna pick out, I like to use saddle hackles on these. So I've got two uh, Coachman Brown um, these are actually furnished. You can see that dark center stripe, which I like. Um, two saddle feathers, size to the hook, and I'm going to strip the stems at their bases so that those stems are just a little longer than the distance from the hook eye back to the front edge of the body. So just a touch longer than that distance. About like so. It's a bit long. 
more like that. And I'm going to tie these in with the insides of their curves toward the hook from the front edge of the body. I'll wrap over them right up to the base of the wing. And you can see those stems are just short of the hook eye. If you're a little long, this is a good time to go in and nick those out. I'll sweep my wings back and cross the thread on the bottom and just continue wrapping over the stems right up to the hook eye. I'll usually take a trip back to the wings, one turn behind, and then forward again, just to keep the underside here as smooth as I can. So now I'm going to begin to wrap, I wrap both hackles at the same time, and I'm going to wrap them with the outsides of the feathers facing forward. Make my first turn. Second turn, third turn, right up to the back of the wings. I'm going to cross the wings on the bottom and put the next turn as upright as I can, right up against the front edge of the wings. One more turn, then I'll lift the feathers and come straight up and straight down with the thread to tie those two feathers off. And I want to get those anchored securely, so I'll get four or five turns on there. Now to trim these stems, I'm going to grab these feathers as close as I can to the hook and just sneak my scissor tips between my fingertips and the hook eye and trim that out. Now, you can see all these loose fibers that come out with those stems. That's what I was getting by holding that close. If I held it further away, I'd have to go out and trim all those out of there individually. So now I'm just going to make enough thread turns to cover the stubs of those hackle feathers. And then I'll build my thread head right on top. So clip that thread out of there. And you've got your finished royal wolf. I've shot a little drop of head cement on the uh, thread head here behind the eye. Um, and that is our finished royal wolf. This is a super buoyant, very easy to see, very uh, visible fly on the water. It's been around forever. It's a hugely popular fly still to this day. Um, it's got a nice wide, you know, 40% of the hook shank or so hackle collar. Um, very dense, so it's got lots of surface area. That hair wing and hair tail make it float very well. Um, it, even in low light, this is a fly that you can uh, you can see very easily on the water. Um, get a good piece of calf body here that makes a huge difference with these these wolf patterns. Having a good chunk that's uh, relatively straight and easy to work with uh, will make a, a giant difference in them. Um, and that small peacock that is proportioned to the size of the hook rather than the kind of big bushy stuff that you'd normally find further down or in a strung bunch. Um, you do want a, a nice uh, clean bunch from the hook up, or from the, the eye of the peacock curl. And that is our finished Royal Wolf. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. There's always more coming. Um, I'm always thinking of something next and uh, if you have requests, uh, keep them to yourself because I'll figure, out, figure that out on my own. Um, it's always fun. Thanks for coming. See ya.